Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk about this interior scene you can see in the background. I'll be talking a little bit about Blender and then I will move to Godot. So let's start. Okay, so we are in Blender and this is how the scene is looking uh, here. So as you can see, I'm in a solid preview right now. Mm. And yeah, um, let's switch to uh, the viewport shading and you can see the colors and the uh, <coughs> other um, textures. So yeah, and uh, that's uh, basically the result in Blender without any kind of uh, um, light map baking and uh, if you really want to see what we can achieve with this scene, uh, we can switch to um, viewport shading uh, with uh, environment and baked light maps. And that's the result uh, you can achieve in a blender. So um, you probably shouldn't expect anything close to this. Uh, in Godot, uh, but uh, you know that it probably shouldn't look um, <coughs> any better than this. So if your scene doesn't look really good with a baked light knobs in a Godot, uh, in a Blender, uh, then you probably should fix it up here first before you try to run it Godot. Okay. So we're done with uh, Blender, so let's switch to uh, Godot. Okay, so we are in Godot and uh, um, before we start uh, to work on our scene, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, firstly, that uh, if you're using a GLB file, uh, as I am doing in this example, you need to go to the import settings and make sure that your light baking is set up as a gen light maps. If it isn't, uh, just check it and click uh, reimport button. Okay, so I created a new inherited scene and as you can see, everything looks correctly, but sometimes you need to change uh, some materials. Uh, like in my example, I changed this glass material, I enable the transparency, I disable a uh, depth draw so that when the shadows uh, from the sun uh, will <coughs> be um, placed uh, inside our uh, room, uh, not, uh, it won't be interrupted by the window. And um, I changed some things like um, albedo color. Uh, I added a metallic. Um, I think it looks better. Uh, it's not uh, 100 uh, physically correct. And I decrease the roughness. Uh, you can also play a little bit with uh, a clear coat if you really like. Uh, other than that, I think uh, everything was imported correctly. Okay, so next step would be to add a light source to our scene. So in this case, I use this directional light. And as you can see, I enabled shadows uh, and I can change a little bit the color and the intensity, energy. Yeah, and uh, right now you can't see any kind of shadows here or light. Uh, and that's because we have our plane uh, with an image background uh, in front of the of the, our uh, room. So we could play with, uh, with a depth drawing, but in this case, I think we can disable it and just use a environment HDR. So let's hide it. And as you can see, we can see um, the shadows passing uh, through our window correctly. Next, uh, I added this uh, Omni light uh, to the shade of our lamp uh, and place it correctly. I enable shadows and I change the bias. It's really important if you leave it at default, you will see this kind of weird effect behind the lamp. So let's just change it to 0.01 and it should be enough. I also change the range and attenuation 
you can modify it to liking and uh, the easy way to multiply multiply it to other lamps is just uh, copy it using control c selecting another shade and pasting it using control v so yeah we'll paste it here here and here mm. we also need uh, another light uh, the main light in the room so let's paste it here and let's modify it a little bit the main thing I will add it is the range so it will fit the the whole room so you can see it slides everything evenly and um, we can just even the attenuation and try it again yeah I think this is correct but as you can see we have this weird pattern on the top so uh, the way to fix it is just, just to change the shadow mode to the dual parabolic and it should be looking correct right now and I think our scene is lightened properly. Next we are uh, going to add a reflection probe so let's uh, add child reflection probe uh, okay and we need to position it correctly in the world. Okay, and after we are happy with the result, we can go again inside our room and uh, just position the origin of the reflection probe. Uh, but first let's configure it, so it will be looking a little bit better. So the thing we need to do, the first thing we need to do is to enable this interior settings, so everything will be reflected from the inside of our, of our room. And uh, yeah, it's looking, I think, more or less correctly. Uh, we should also enable a box projection, as you can see it's uh, a lot better for this kind of scene. Uh, the downside is that this scene needs to be a box shaped place, so it won't work if you have a weird shaped rooms, or it won't work really that good. So let's enable also shadows, um, and we can uh, try to place our reflection probe in the correct space. Uh, place. So let's move it down. As you can see, if the correct uh, reflection prop is too high, you will be able to see the things above our bed, and I think that's incorrect. So let's move it a little bit lower, and uh, this weird effect uh, disappeared. So we can just, you know, move it a little bit closer or further away. Uh, the thing is that uh, this reflection is captured from this point, so uh, it will be looking a little bit off, uh, so uh, just keep it in mind. Uh, you can also use uh, screen space reflections in the environment options, uh, but I will talk about it uh, in a minute. Okay, and we are ready to add our environment nodes, so let's search for environment and let's add to the scene. Uh, yeah, and let's create a new environment. So everything went to grey, so that's uh, normal behavior because our dragon changed to a clear color. Let's select a sky and let's uh, choose panorama sky. Uh, open it and let's search for our texture. Uh, I will be using this image. I will link it in the video description and as we can see, we can see forest right now and this is the result. Okay, so other than that, we can enable a tone mapping. I prefer to use ACES, so everything is a little bit much more lively. Uh, and we can also enable uh, glow and uh, screen space ambient occlusion. So just play with settings and see what fits your scene the best. And um, I actually like to decrease the radius a little bit, so it's looking a little bit less intensive. Mm. You can also try enabling a screen space reflections. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, as I said before, it really depends on the scene and what you are after. Uh, in my case, I don't think I really need it. Uh, and I think that the reflection probe is a little bit too strong, so. I will decrease the intensity. Yeah, something like that looks a lot more natural for my taste. Okay, and now it's a big time. Uh, we're gonna add a, a baked light map. So go to the, your root node, search for baked light map, and let's add it to the scene. 
Remember to make your walls and sailing thick so that you won't have any light leakage. Okay, after our baked map was added to the scene and properly uh, resize, we are ready for first bake. So let's just check quickly our settings. Uh, I probably will leave everything at default. Uh, maybe I will enable a scene environment and let's hit bake. Oh, we need to save our scene. So uh, tutorial scene. And now we will be able to bake. Okay, and we are ready. Everything is baked. As you can see, that's how our scene is looking right now. And I think it's pretty decent. Uh, so let's move on to the next section. Okay, so now it's time to uh, add a proper rack to our room. So let's select uh, rack node. Uh, and let's add a new child uh, and it will be a shell for node from the Casper's uh, shell for Adam. So let's create. And as you can see, we have a four right now. You can change the um, pattern UV scale so it will be a little bit bigger. And uh, if you go to the material shape, you can decrease the length to something more fitting your scene, like 0.15. And uh, I think it's actually a little bit too big still. So maybe something like that. And of course we can change some colors. So it will be much more fitting our scene. Okay, and we are done with the rack. Uh, I think it's looking pretty nice. Of course you can change uh, some patterns like, uh, like that. Mm, and. Uh, uh, if it's looking a little bit repetitive, you can increase the scale and play a little bit with this uh, settings. So yeah, that's all about rack. And the last thing I want to mention this scene is that you can use few tricks to improve the visuals. So for example, you can use multiple light sources and in the one in the same place, like duplicate. Uh, sorry. Uh, just select uh, Omni Light and duplicate it and move it a little bit uh, to the top and duplicate it again, move it a little bit to the top or down. And you can see this is looking a little bit more natural, but let's undo it and let's make uh, another uh, <coughs> change. Uh, and what we will do is we will bake uh, our lights uh, not only in an indirect mode, but uh, also a direct light. So you will need to select all your lights. So let's forge them. And let's select all the lights. Uh, with all the lights selected, go to the parameter sections and change light bake mode to all. Uh, our scene went black or darker and that's because we need to rebake our light maps again. So let's hit bake and I will bake in a minute. Okay, and this scene is baked and as you can see it's looking a lot different than before. And that's because the light mapper is actually using a ray tracing method. So as we can see, the ambient occlusion right now is actually a little bit too strong. So in a, <clears throat> in a mode where we bake uh, all our lights, uh, I would recommend uh, tuning down screen space ambient occlusion or just disabling. So let's try like point, point 0.2 maybe. I think it's still too strong. Yeah, I think I, think, uh, I will leave it at point 0.1. And uh, that's how our scene is presenting right now. Uh, the downside of this test method is that uh, any dynamic object added to the scene uh, will be looking a little bit strange. So like we add a mesh instance uh, and uh, clear this uh, search uh, box and let's add a new cube you will see 
that's it's looking uh, a little bit different uh, from the rest so let's decrease the scale because it's too big and uh, yeah and as you can see the shadows are really different they are a lot darker and actually they doesn't uh, look so good on the uh, on the baked objects so you can see anything like that here uh, and yeah that's the limitation of this uh, of this method and this is how our sen scene ended up looking as you can see i made few adjustments in the environment and the light probe uh, basically you just tweak it and until you achieve something to like um, i think this is a good enough result and uh, I think I'll leave it here. So if you like it or have any questions, just uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, and I hope you, I will see you on the next video.